In this online lecture, we're going to talk about the benzene reaction. And what we're going to learn here is number one, that the reaction involves an unstable benzene intermediate. We're also going to see number two here, that the reaction does not require ortho or para substituted electron withdrawing groups on the ring, such as in typical nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And three, what we're going to see is the mechanism is termed elimination addition. We're going to see that's going to help us memorize the mechanism. So let's look at the overall reaction first. This is an aromatic reaction. And if you remember correctly, the big aromatic reaction that we've learned before is electrophilic aromatic substitution. So it's very likely on your next orgo exam, you're going to need to know this reaction as well as electrophilic aromatic substitution. And just as the name implies an electrophilic aromatic substitution, we're adding electrophiles to a benzene ring. So it should be obvious if you see this reagent right here on the exam. This is not an electrophile. OH, remember, can act as a nucleophile. So right away, you're going to know it's not electrophilic aromatic substitution. It must be some kind of nucleophilic aromatic substitution, which is, by the way, happens to be the type of reaction that the benzene reaction is. What we end up getting here is this as a product. And let's make a general observation here. Notice the Cl on the benzene ring in the reactant is being replaced by an OH. We have a substitution. It's being achieved by a nucleophile. Hence, this is a type of nucleophilic aromatic substitution. But let's look at the mechanism here and understand it a little better. In the first step, the OH- actually doesn't behave as a nucleophile. It actually behaves as a base. And here's what I mean by this. Notice, look what he's doing here in this electron move. He's simply taking off that hydrogen. So it's as if the aromatic molecule is donating a proton to the OH. After this hydrogen is stripped off, the electrons in the bond remain behind and sit on top of the carbon in the ring like this. Notice this is the conjugate base of the original molecule. Now watch what happens next here. These electrons fall down right here and boot off the Cl like that. The result of this arrow movement is this molecule right here. This is what's called a benzene intermediate we should know that this molecule is very unstable. And the reason why is simple. Notice these carbons right here in the ring, this carbon here specifically and this one right here, are sp hybridized. And remember, sp hybridized carbons like to have 180 degree bond angles. But notice because this molecule is a six-membered ring, the 180 degree bond angles can't be achieved. So basically, there's some strain on this molecule, and that's why it's unstable, and therefore highly reactive. Which means this reaction has to keep going until we get to something more reasonably stable. The next step here involves reacting another OH in solution, but this time he acts as a nucleophile, in the sense that he attacks this carbon right here, one of the carbons in the triple bond. That causes these pi electrons in the triple bond to jump up on this carbon right here. What we end up with is this as a result. But I want to show you something here. That's not the only possibility, and we have to keep this in mind. For instance, the OH, instead of attacking the right-hand carbon in the triple bond, he can actually attack this carbon right here, which is on the left side of the triple bond. That would cause the pi electrons to move this way in this case. So we end up with something like this as a result. We'll see why this is important when we get to the quick product method. Now, how does this reaction end? Notice we have unstable species right here. But if you remember, going back to the original overall reaction, it consists of two separate reactions. The first one reacting NaOH with water at a high temperature. And here's the second reaction then we follow it up with some acid at a high pressure. Notice so far we've only added the NaOH. So now we're at reaction two here, adding the acid. So here we are adding acid to this molecule, and all this is is just an acid-base reaction, with H3O plus acting as the acid and donating a proton to our molecule here, like this. We end up with this right here as a result, a stable molecule. 
And that also means our other molecule that we can possibly get, the same thing happens. The H3O plus protonates those electrons there, and we end up with this as a result. Now, let's pause for some vocab here for a second. Remember, we started out with this original molecule right here. And let's keep track of our carbons here. This carbon right here in green is the one that originally had a Cl on it. That would be this carbon right here in one of our products. This product is called the direct substitution product. Simply since the carbon with the Cl was directly substituted and now has the OH nucleophile. Whereas in the top product here, this was the original carbon that had the Cl. Notice the nucleophile is attached to the carbon next door to it. This is called the sign substitution. What we have to remember is that in the benzyne reaction, we get both a direct substitution and a sign substitution product. For this particular case, our sign substitution and our direct substitution happen to be identical. But we're going to see that's not always the case. I'll show you an example of this a little bit later. So for now, let's go back to our overall reaction. When we see these reagents on our orgo test, we're going to have to remember that this is going towards the benzyne reaction. And some of the things you're looking for, remember, are number one, an aromatic ring. Number two, a Cl or leaving group on the aromatic ring. And again, the NaOH or some nucleophile in the first reaction, followed by a second reaction that involves acid. Now, let's talk vocab, and this will also help us memorize the mechanism for our test. When I showed you the mechanism, I broke it up into small little parts. But here's all that's really happening. Remember, in the first step, we're grabbing the H off the aromatic molecule. The electrons in the CH bond are falling down between two carbons in the ring, and the Cl is getting booted off. This all happens in one swift step, which is basically just, if you remember, an elimination reaction. This step leads to the benzyne intermediate. The next part of the reaction, remember, involves reacting another OH minus. This, remember, is when he adds to the benzyne intermediate on either carbon in the triple bond. Since he's adding to it, we call this an addition reaction. And eventually, this leads to product. So sometimes, the benzyne reaction is referred to as the elimination addition reaction, simply because it follows that pathway. We're going to remember that to help us remember the mechanism. Now remember, sometimes on your orgo exam, your professor only wants the product. He doesn't care about the mechanism. So let's talk about our quick product method on an exam to get to product and not have to worry about going through the mechanism. Let's say we're reacting this molecule right here. Notice it's an aromatic ring. It has a methyl and a BR. In step one, we have NaNH2. Remember, this is a salt that could possibly break up in the solution, creating NH2 minus, which is a potential nucleophile. And notice in step two, we have NH3, which could possibly protonate something. So again, remember, you have a benzene ring, you have a decent leaving group such as BR, and you have two reactions here, number one with a nucleophile and number two with something that could protonate. This would make you think that you're dealing with the benzene reaction. And we're asked for a product here, so let me show you how to quickly get there. But first, let's go back and remind ourselves what happened in the actual mechanism. Remember, the OH rips off one of these hydrogens right here, and the electrons boot up on that carbon. And here's what I need you to know always. The hydrogen that we're ripping off is always connected to the carbon next door to the carbon that has the leaving group. And it's between these two carbons right here, the carbon that has the H that we ripped off and the carbon with the leaving group, that's where the triple bond forms between. This is always going to be the case. So watch what happens here in our quick product method. Remember, this is the carbon right here that has the leaving group on it. We need to look at a carbon next door that has a hydrogen on it. We know that's the hydrogen that has to be ripped off. But notice if we go and look at this carbon right here, he doesn't have a hydrogen on him. He only has that methyl. But this carbon right here does have a hydrogen on it. So that must be the hydrogen that we're going to rip off. So in your head, you should think, 
the NaNH2 then rips off that hydrogen right there. The electrons then go this way and we boot off the leaving group which means that's where our triple bond is going to form. Remember, you're not writing those arrows out on the exam, you're just thinking that in your head. What's key here is trying to figure out where the triple bond is going to be formed. And here's why that's so important. Once we know where the triple bond is, we know that the nucleophile can add to either this carbon right here, which would lead to this particular product, or remember, it could add to the other carbon over here in the triple bond, which would directly lead to this as a product. And look at our products here. In this case, are they the same? Notice they're not. The top product has a 1,3 substitution and the bottom one has a 1,2 substitution. Or in other words, the top one is meta substituted, the bottom one is ortho substituted. So that's our quick way to get to the product here without mulling through the mechanism. So what have we learned here? Key points. Number one, we saw that the reaction involves an unstable benzyne intermediate. That's how this reaction got its name. We also saw number two that the reaction does not require ortho or para substituted electron withdrawing groups on the ring, such as in the normal nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, which we talked about in another online lecture. And number three, the mechanism is termed elimination addition. Remember, this helps us recall the mechanism if we happen to forget how it goes down.